And now, our feature presentation. Ah, oh wait, no, there I am. Alright, alright boys, how's it going? How you doing, boysies? I forgot my usual intro, what do I usually say? Oh yeah, welcome to Man the Dusty Old Man of Home Video Store. And that's right boys, we're digging back into Deadly Premonition 2, a blessing in disguise. So last time, oh I forget, it's circled to go forward. So last time we uh, began our inve investigation in La Car, uh, met some of the strange and unusual residents of town, and we've started our investigation to look into the, the connection between a drug called Saint... I, f I can't remember what it is. What's the drug? Let's have a look at the setting. I can't remember the name of the drug. But uh, it tends to be a drug and the murder of a young lady. And we're also investigating the mur that mur same murder, I think about 15 years in the future, as Aaliyah Davis, who's interrogating Mork and Mork's talent back to us. So aye, it's a prequel and a sequel at the same time. But anyway, boysies, let's dig right in. So last thing we were trying to get the bone alley off of this, off of this woman, because that's a normal thing to do in video games. What's the, what's the child want? What's Patricia want? Just hurry and finish up your investigation already. Can't stand being inside this place without a chocolate sundae, not even for a second. Don't worry, Patty. I'll knock down those ten maidens in the blink of an eye. You just wait here and drink your milk. Meh. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've got a child sidekick as well. I forgot about that. But what's what's over here? What it be, honey? Oh no, I need a sneeze. Oh no, let's, let's talk to her in the meantime. Oh god, voice acting. Why don't you take a break from all that, investigating, and enjoy some home cooked soul food? Oh, don't worry, I'm enjoying the food in my own way. Oh my lord, no three that ain't gonna cut it, honey. That's what you call enjoying something with all your heart. No, that ain't what you. I see. You're just taking it as it comes. Using nothing but your own experience to decide whether something tastes good or not. You're trying to measure food from an unknown land with the same measuring system we've always used. And that ain't gonna help you discover Ed and you. Now am I right or am I right? If you really want to enjoy the local food here, you gotta do as the locals tell you. I see Alexis, you may have a point. Well then, is there a certain food you'd like me to sample? Oh my lord, of course there is, honey. I got a recipe from a special Cajun dish that I can make right here in my diner. Eat this dish and power will course through your veins. It also calm your mind and refill your stamina. And it's filled with flavour you ain't gonna experience in that big city of yours. Sounds very intriguing, doesn't it, Zach? Okay, and Alexis, can you make us that special dish right away? Oh my lord, how do you expect me to make a dish that, like that that fast? Preparing all the ingredients takes a mighty long time. I don't even have them all in stock. How about I bring you the ingredients you need then? Oh my lord. I see your good looks uh, aren't all going... Uh, I see your good looks aren't all you got going for you, honey. There we go. Sorry, my dyslexia just murdered me there. You got some real grit. That can go a long way. I'm even going to need a total of three ingredients. You, would, uh, you wouldn't mind bringing them to me one by one? Here's the first ingredient I need. Uh, I need to get rice at a sugarcane plantation, so I need to get one by one, so we'll, we'll do that at the side sort of thing. Once you bring me the first ingredient, I'll start working on it. In the meantime, you should go out and find me the next one. I'm getting really excited now. It's been quite a spell since I made that special dish. A special Cajun dish. Seems like a case, doesn't it, Zach? Special sale for sunburned customers only. Right, let's talk to this lady. What did, how did I get her off of the... Excuse me, Mrs. Carpenter. Stop! Not now! Can't you see I'm already in my bowling stance? Okay. What, are you blind? Ugh. 
there's a weird int I don't know if there's a level of jank that's like intentional or you know pick up this split. Holy mother of bowling balls. Let me pick up this split. And I thought you should have the perfect game. You wouldn't get a split if it was a perfect game. Fucking my ears, my god. works on a split. Oh, yeah, it never fails. <laughs> I might try it because I'm absolutely dog shit at bowling. Zap I play with the fucking sides up. Appears to be a very superstitious lady. We should try and utilize this trait of hers in order to gain access to the lane for a bit. That was an amazing shot, Mrs. Carpenter. In fact, it may have been the most amazing shot I've ever seen. No, Zach, tell her it's shite. Speaking of which, where did you happen to find all those neat little items? The ones you used to help you bowl that split just now. Ooh, you got a keen eye there, Mr. Special Agent. I need to go pick them up for her, don't I? Oh, it's just fetch quests. Lovely. Taking a liking to my collection, have you? Oh, yes. A great liking. I'm not going to be 100% and everything. Don't, don't worry. I didn't do that the last one. I'm just going to do, like, a couple of side stuff, but not have it interfere with like, the main quest, you know? Buy all my charms and power stones from Erzuli Frida. Erzuli Frida? Yes, it's a mystical establishment run by the Mirror. The Mirror? The worst paper. Actually, I don't know. It's the Mirror worst paper. I don't read newspapers. I know it's not the Sun or the Sport or any other fucking rag sheet like the Daily Mail or whatever. If you're interested, I can mark it on your map for you. I realize I've now said something I don't fucking know. Zach, this is it. Don't Zach know what uh, fucking uh, like allegiance the mirror is anyway. Go on, because I'm going on about shit I don't know. There must be a treasure trove of dubious trinkets on sale there. We may even be able to find something capable of changing her mind. It really feels like we're in the deep south now, doesn't it? Right, so I now need to go. You may uh, find a way to convince Miss Carpenter to bolt little bowl. Anyway, I was reading that, but it's gone. Right, so we'll do this and we'll be focusing on just bowling a... Fuck it, let's go do that. We can go do the other missions in a wee bit. Right. Oh, yes, fuck, fuck, you're still here. Why are you leaving? You gave up on trying to convince Mrs. Carpenter to let you play? No, Patty, neither Zach nor I. How do I get the map up? Nope, wrong button again. There we go. Right. What's this? There we go. Right, we'll head down here and. Oh, right, the waypoint's there. Cool. Oh, I forget. How did I get on my... There we go. Oh, I guess it's a bit... I think it's down this way. Oh, Lily's barking at something. That's not how you pause. She's right up there. She's probably going to bark again. What are you barking at? What is it? Right, we're nearly there, nearly there, but it's weird there's like no cars either. It's like a weird lifeless town. Like, at least way, uh, Green, was it Greenvale? Is that, no, Greenvale's the fucking college in, uh, which call, no, it was Greenvale. Greenvale's a college community. There was a little, like, feeling of life in that one. Because there's at least cars going about and some people, go, you know. This has a big bang of like Unity like, Unity Store Town that you've just bought. Oh no! no I meant to go check the map, but I keep forgetting that Circle's back. No, Circle is yes. Oh, is that how you do it?
So next time we play, because uh, I've, I've been planning to go back and play Tony Hawk's Underground 2. We're just making Mark, right? Oh, what's in the bin? Low quality plate. Er, right, Eru, Eruzul Reda. They literally said it a couple of seconds ago and I can't remember. Shop. It's a voodoo shop. Just looks like a dumb souvenir shop to me. Of course it does, Patty. You're much too young to understand the true value of such a place. Oh dear, oh dear. Mind we seen the, the voodoo guy in the mirror and he started talking to us? That was, that was fucking weird. I'm expecting that to have a whole subplot that doesn't get brought up ever. Kind of like the shadow people in the first game. Who just appear but no one ever mentions them. Oh, that's, that's the thing it's in our hotel room. This is all kid stuff. It's just a bunch of charms. I'm allowed to watch TV and go on the internet, but I ain't allowed in here? My daddy makes no sense sometimes. You agree, right, Agent York? Oh, I, uh, yeah. This is all just kid stuff. Look at this sack. All the mysticism of the Deep South gathered up into one quaint little shop. This is a hundred times more exciting than the FBI evidence vault. Really? Oh, anyway. A vast treasure chest. So much to study, so much to learn. Right, cool. I. The mirror. Oh, he is. Big Jack. Oh, here we go. Jack does fuck. Thou art a seeker, and I see the object of thy desire. I'm going to have not, I don't know enough about voodoo to certainly go, is this slightly offensive, but I've seen Snake in the Rainbow, that's about it. Oh! This be what thou seekest? Absolutely. A tiny alligator. The mirror. I could sell it to thee now. I mean, I have lost quite a lot of money because I punched it, I uh, barred everyone. Surely fortune shall not bless thee with another chance. Purchase this and know that thy wishes shall be granted. I'm going to be saying what the fuck a lot. Between this and Charlie's excellent adventure, there's going to be a lot of confusion going on. That's crazy. Even I can tell you're getting cheated, Agent York. I disagree, Patty. This person can be trusted. I've been studying people for quite a while, so I can tell. That figurine is connected to our future. Hi, Kieran. Price is true. What say thee? What, what do you think? We're in a voodoo shop? Buy the alligator figurine from the mirror. Wait, how much is it? 30. Easy. A strapping alligator wearing a top hat, standing on two legs. He's also carrying a cane. Let's buy that. I'll buy it. Thou art a man of refined taste. So, Keen, when are you playing Sekiro again? You're probably sick of people saying that. I am loath to part with it, but twould be a fool's errand to keep it from such a keen eyed soul. I'll believe it. You finishing it this week? What's wrong with you? Potentially Tuesday. You have to choose the days I'm in work, don't you? Bastard. No normal person would ever buy a piece of junk like that. Not even at a garage sale. There's something really odd with this guy's face. There's something really odd with this whole game, Shinra. How you doing? Shinra, have you done celebrating? Because 5 1, that's, that's a badging. Don't know I'll finish it. No idea how much of the game's left. I've seen that final boss, Kieran. You're fucked. Absolutely fucked. 5 1 is so fucking funny. And considering that one was our own goal as well. So. Not to like pull the curtain back too much, but I do work in an old folks home and they were all excited about the the game. So much so that we got uh, booze in for them, we got party snacks in for them, and I, I was leaving at 6 o'clock yesterday I was like, right, it's going to be a big deal, it's going to be a big night for them. And I was, and my first thought in the back of my head was going, they're having an awful time right now. They've been all hyped up and it's a massacre, you know? 
Oh, that was rough. Not that I care about football, but oh, oh, that was a uh... marvelous, isn't it, Zach? What a treasure! I can't wait to use it. Use it? Where? How? Isn't it obvious, Patty? I'm going to put it in front of Mrs. Carpenter's house. In front of her house? Yes. I'm sure this figurine will stop her right in her tracks. I have no clue how he went from A to B there. Well, it went straight from... ...to finally topple the Ten Maidens. Every person went high going into the game, but fucking hell, I... I Scotland always has this. I remember I was, talking, I was telling someone to work about this story. I think it was the, even the Euros years ago. I want to say, I was still in high school at this time, so this is maybe about... About 16, 17 years ago. And uh, Scotland beat Germany, I think. Oh, it's on by like fluke, like we like it was really tough. And then we'd went, we'd get to the finals if we won the next game, and it was against Italy. And everyone got surprised. Everyone got excited. It was literally like a national holiday. Teachers in Moscow were coming in wearing kilts. They were getting so excited, and oh, it was a massacre. They were going out for dinner last night, and Haley kept checking the score. And I honestly thought it was a piss. she was taking the piss. Yeah, it's like cartoonishly awful. Of course I am. And so is Zach. Aren't you? I'm seriously wondering if I should quit helping you out with this. Place the alligator figure in, in front of Miss Carpenter's house while she's home. Right, here we go. Let's go do this so we can then get to the bowl. Oh, that's the bowl, a perfect 10. Oh, you're shitting us. How's uh, Dragon Age going? Whoa. Oh, what's going on here? It's close. Uh. Well, oh, hello. You all standing there like you're expecting me to apologize. Huh, it's your fault for not paying attention. Galena Clarkson. What? Got a moment? Can't say I do. I'm in a hurry here. I haven't played them at all. Take up too much of your time. I I've been away working so much that I'm just like, not sure when. I'm in a hurry, Pickerwood. Now get out of my way. God, I wish Megan would talk to me like that. Patty, who was that? He's madly in love. Kalina Clarkson, PJ Clarkson's second daughter, and Lisa's mother. Oh, her daughter's just been murdered. Oh, I see. Zach. We've found ourselves a Clarkson. Oh, no, she's not here. My dolly. She's not here. My dolly isn't here. So, yeah, is it Tracy as a human, uh, which got to meet us? Now things are Tracy as a human noble. Interesting. What class are you playing? Isn't that right, Zach? Oh, yeah, I looked up gameplay of uh, Dragon Age 4, and I'm just, I don't know. It looks fine. It's probably gonna be good. I don't know, I'm just... I just wish they made one like Origins, which is completely not going to happen. Because then, get, I know games like fucking Baldur's Gate exists, you know? Which is probably closer to what I've wanted. Trace, what? I'm guessing a rogue. No, warrior. What was I? I, I was a rogue. Yeah, I was. I sat back my wee, my wee dinky bow. My dolly's missing. My sweet little dolly. Alright. Do you have a a dolly for uh, charms? Verily, much shall serve thee well here. Enhance or cre create a conjure doll, immortal doll, boost your physical abilities, boost your physical. Oh, Jesus Christ! Ninja doll, thief doll, giant doll, uh, clown doll. Oh, I need to. I need to get stuff to. I, can I see. It. Thy return is imminent. If thou hast discovered the very purpose of my emporium, that is. It's like an upgrade shop. There we go. Wait. My dolly's missing. My sweet old dolly. Uh, we'll come back to you. Let's go put the gator in front of this uh, woman's house. You know, when I read back the quest, I feel like I'm just fucking losing my mind here. Right, 
Right, here we are. Uh, what button is it again? There we go. Oh god, Mark, no turn. There we go. Look at this fucking... I've said before this Unity sto Asset Store fucking place. Like, I... So, the game's weird, right? I like its weirdness, but... I do have a, a bit of a feeling of a Samurai Cop 2 about it, you know? Like, I don't know how much of this sort of jank is intentional. You know, it's like when you watch Samurai Cop 2 and there's Tom Roy's O, and that, you're like, uh, kind of defeats the point of what Samurai Cop 1 was, you know? Because one day we're making, we made a genuine effort to make this fucking cool. Good lord, this will see. Uh, it's, yeah. Oh, Clarkson Food Delivery Services. Right, we'll come back to this. This is our uh, main quest. I went through the wrong one. How do, how do I bring the map up again? There we go. Where's that woman's house? Uh, let's check a quest, right? Miss Carpenter's house. Maybe... This other one here as well. Nope, get back on that. Who are these two lads? Alright, boys. Fucking... Champions Online NPCs. Okay, Patty. I'm going to try asking you that question again. What do you do when you're at home? I watch TV and look up stuff on the internet, I guess. Ain't much else to do when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Really? Oh, yeah, I've got a child sidekick, by the way. I envisioned you working hard to take care of all the chores around the house. Well, of course. You are some massive like fucking you. misogynist. Listen, everyone, why bother talking about it? Other kids your age don't help out their parents. They're too busy talking with their friends on the phone or through emails. That's stupid. I don't get why everyone's so obsessed with taking pictures of themselves. Then they send them to their friends just to get approval. Talk about cringeworthy. How do you prefer to boost your self-esteem then? I don't oh my god. I have my family. And besides, my daddy's the town sheriff. All I need to be happy is a normal life. That's awfully mature of you. Everyone else is just childish. I'm totally normal. Okay then. So what do you do after you finish all your chores? You don't turn on CNN and pour yourself some bourbon, do you? CNN? That's kid stuff. What I watch Fox News. Oh no, Kimmer's right. Like Kimmer's right. Oh no. Live sports? You just don't get it, Agent York. Full House, Friends, Beverly Hills 90210, sitcoms. Sitcoms are an all-in-one package. Dreams, love, life lessons, science fiction. They've got everything you'd ever want. Well, that's Friends is fucking shite. Just show reruns all day long. It's the best. Oh, CNN, the bourbon TV show is this old one called MacGyver. The main character is cute and smart. I don't know his real name, but I like him. Oh, and I also like Gil Grissom from CSI. I just think it's adorable how he keeps maggots inside his fridge. Okay, you, Patty, that was very informative. Uh, boys, what's the one that's got the goth girl? Is it CSI? Are, hmm, they're a bit hard to do. I just remember fancy that goth girl, of course. NCIS, that's it. Also, as soon as I mentioned that, uh, they're like, oh, it's that one. They know exactly what one we're talking about. Francis would have voted Hillary twice if he could. It's the only notable thing I know about that show. I'll be honest, I've never watched one of those. Oh, you know, they're always on, you know, like NCIS, Law and Order, uh, you know, those uh, disposable crate. Oh! Don't know what happened there, but we're now flying. You know, those, uh, what do you call them? Like, crime of the week shows. I think they're really toothless. Like, see if I want to watch crime shit, I need it to be set a certain level of gritty. And they just don't have it, you know? But when they've got a goth girl, I'll be like, well, hey.
right across this house. I used to watch a, a fair bit of CSI NY ages ago. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's probably it's probably good telly you don't need to think about a lot watching, if you know what I mean. Like, believe me, I watch fucking video essays on speedrun and I cannot slag anyone's fucking uh, watching habits. Also, I think Friends is fucking shite. So they brought up sitcoms, boys. What's the best sitcom? I know they say this and I don't have a lot of hot takes on sitcoms because I don't really watch a lot of them. But Frasier's is my favourite. Frasier's the best. That... That is not a very good... Don't mind me, boys. Don't mind me. That dog could easily escape and we pick up. Use visions to acquire important hints that will help us throughout the game. Using vision will deplete your concentration. Be careful about using it so much. Oh, I was subbing here. It was raid the bins. House uh, home improvement was my favourite as a Wayne. I never watched home improvement ever. It was I remember it being on. Uh, was it? Virgin channel for a bit, it was always that and Fresh Prince of Bel Air where I was having reruns. Community's class, I'm actually on the fourth season. Bad timing, Zach. We need to place the figurine in front of her house when she's home, otherwise, it'll be useless. Let's come back later. Hey, what time is it needing? 10 o'clock at night to 6 in the morning, and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Community is fucking class. I'm like I'm, I'm only I'm in what you call a bad the bad season now, and but, so I was watching it with Megan and I was like, I hate that I find Chevy Chase so funny because I know he is an absolute fucking prick. Right, let's have let's have a smoke. Right, so I'm, oh, it only goes forward in an hour. Right, I guess we'll go do something else. But, uh, all of a sudden he's fucking class, Fraser's fucking class. And according to, uh, Rolling Stone, this best that comes is The Simpsons. Looks like a case of bad timing, Zach. Let's come back later. But I think The Simpsons has been, like, so shite for so long that I don't even know if I'd, like, openly admit to people that I'm a fan of The Simpsons. You know, there'd always be a certain level of, oh, I don't know about this, you know? Well, saying that, there was a Trios of Horror that came out last year that was actually really good. But I think it's, I've heard since COVID they've focused on like small and smaller writing teams and shit like that and more sort of better suits. If we're just talking about studio sitcoms, Third Rock from his son's my favourite. I never watched Third Rock. Was that one with their aliens? For, for some reason I thought that and 30 Rock were the same shows. I'm a dafty, what can I say? You're thinking about my parents are aliens? That's the one. 30th rock from St. Iad. Alec Baldwin and your man Faye, uh, what you call it? Jurassic Park cutting the boot. I guess we'll play later on, but the early seasons are funny as fuck. I've tried Seinfeld, never got into that. I, I, I don't want to pass a hot take. I just can't fucking go with Jerry Seinfeld. Squirrels! Oh! Wait, it's still my rubber bullet. Get back here, you beef. Arsehole. Arrested Development's my favourite non like, like I've never watched it. My, my dad's always telling me to watch Arrested Development. He's always saying how good it is. But the thing is, my mum and dad have a have an awful taste in shows. They can either be, like, if they recommend something to me, it's either, oh, I don't know about this, or... Never got that appeal of Seinfeld, but Americans love it. I like, oh, what's his name? Your man for Jurassic Park. I like him. Is it Wayne Knight? He's not in Seinfeld, is he? Some uh badly aged things, but mostly fine. Most, uh, which got sitcoms around that era have some stuff that's awfully aged. Like, I had the episode of Cheers on in the background. And I think Cheers, I'm not as big on. I love Fraser, but Cheers is fine. And, yeah, that was Ted Danson just starting to knock the fuck out. Uh, uh, what was her name? 
the main character, the other main character, I forget, Diane. And I was like, oh, not, oh, no. Bone stone top 100 is absolutely shite. Doesn't even have Only Fools and Horses. I have never seen an episode of Only Fools and Horses, ever. I've seen the clip where they're Batman, and I've seen the clip where the chandelier, and I've seen the clip where he leans through the, the, what you call it? That thing, that's about it. Yeah, let's buy a donut. Mr. York, that was mighty quick. The special agent does it again. <laughs> you sure don't waste any time. I mean, apart from the fact I fucked off for bowling and shit like that, but anyway. I bet my CLG's got a lot to learn from you. Uh, uh, by the way, Mr. York, looks to me like you aren't packing anything. Oh, best. Oh, I'm Alan Partridge. is amazing. I love when uh, look, look, look at uh, American sitcoms and it's like 10 seasons and each with 24 episodes. Alan Partridge, two seasons, like six episodes each and they're all the best. Megan's really struggles to watch them because they're that cringy. But they're so fucking, f oh they're so good. See specifically, like season one I think is the amazing, the best. I don't know how, I, I just quote that to Megan all day, it's so fucking good. Me so Megan loves the movie. But she says it's because he's not as pathetic in the movie. I was like, no, no, I want pure fucking. Also, read the. Uh, I listened to his audiobook. His audiobook's so funny because it's basically. It goes through his life, Alan Partridge's life, but it's also all the events of the show from his point of view where he's like, oh yeah, uh, I went for a meeting with the BBC that offered me a show, but I said, I said I didn't want any part of that. And everyone clapped as I walked out the restaurant. I was like, 10 on 10, Alan. 10 on 10. I was on vacation in New Orleans before I happened to stop by here. I remember as a kid, so I didn't obviously didn't I, I didn't know what Alan Partridge was. And I remember I'd seen Steve Coogan in a few movies. Like I'd seen uh which got what was I seen? I seen Around the World in Eighty Days, I think, with Jackie Chan, because I like Jackie Chan, so I watched that. And then I was in as the one day and it was I'm Alan Partridge season one D V D and I was looking at it going I also a lot of Steve Coogan. Wonder if they're brothers or whatever. Well, shoot, that won't do. Here, I got some I think you'll like. Oh dear. <laughs> I call him Mr. Alligator. Bad ass, ain't he? It's a tranquilizer gun for the gators. Oh, I see. I don't why it was like purple. A non lethal gun made for self defense that can only fire rubber bullets. And here's a radio. With this, you won't have to worry about any expensive roaming fees. Acquired radio. The radio Melvin gave you should come in handy. Might take you a while to get used to him, but you'll get it. I refused to watch it for years because I really got put off by the English co by English comedies, but it's such good shit. Oh, it's amazing. Use Mr. Agar, a self-defense gun you got to destroy the wooden boxes. Cool, easy peasy. Wait, what? Why, why am I shooting a dog? We need to equip the gun. Wait, inventory. Uh, the thick of it is up there uh, for me. That's not what I've never got around to seeing. I know I'd probably enjoy it. But I've just never got round to it. There we go, right. What is this? Dodge, Mork, what is this? Oh, my stamina's running low. This looks like... You, see, you know when you see those... Oh, oh my god. You, you see what those adverts where it's like... Uh, you know the adverts from mobile shooters and it's like, you won't last five minutes playing this game. It looks like one of them. Red Dwarf will always be one of my favourites. Uh, we watched the thick of it earlier this week. Still very good. Now, Still not a big fan of intriguing. Armando Iannucci, but I've liked For the of the. Gun, it really packs a punch. I've liked the of thick of it episodes. Ah, oh, the odd one. He's so hunched over, jeez. I know it just looks so un so unnatural, you know. But I'm afraid I'll decline. After all, this town is peaceful, isn't it? Well, sure is peaceful. At least the humans are, but the animals, huh, are a different story. Uh, remember what I named it? 
There are some real mean-ass gators out there in the swamps. And every now and then, they wander into town. Oh, that's Megan's nightmare. Oh, fuck. Alligators are terrifying. One of them even went and ate a kid once. Oh, God. It happened a long time ago, but still. Mind when a kid eat... Uh, not a kid. An alligator eating a wane at Disneyland one year. Yeah, what a fucking mental time. One chomps all it takes. They swallow down every last bit of you. Poor kid's parents didn't even know what to put in his coffin. That's just cheery. The worst part is, that taught the gators just how tasty we humans are. So now, those suckers just attack on sight. Man-eating crocodiles will feast tonight. In Blood Swamp. They're really trying to go for that Twin Peaks-like thing of everyone being a fucking weirdo. I was talking to Crash the other day though. Spiffy's taste is impossible to predict. It is literally all over the place. Ew. What is the one he was telling me? It's like he was... He went to see... Oh, years ago, it was he He go to see... Who's your man that done Spring Breakers? What's his name? He does really fucking weird movies. He's done a new movie in complete infrared. Like, he'll go see movies like that. He'll go see movies that are like... Art house ones. And then he'll turn around and go... Oh, Freddy Got Fingered was really fucking good, didn't it? Like, goes from literally the high, the most, like, pretentious shite to the bottom of the fucking barrel. It's, you never quite know. The only time I knew 100% that something Kieran was gonna like was when I told him to watch Twin Peaks. I was like, this is very, very him, you know? I never heard about no kid getting swallowed by a gator. I remember I was telling him to watch Alan Partridge and it was that awkward, so I was watching him watch it going like, oh, please like it, come on. I want someone else to, like, talk about this way. Actually, Patricia, you're wrong. I'm what? Alligators do attack people, and it could happen in any town. Oh god, even Kirky? Oh no. Huh? Alligator, 1980. Directed by Louis Teague. It takes place in the Midwest, I believe. A teenage girl's pet alligator gets flushed down the toilet. I'm guessing alligator was another fucking, like, creature feature Jaws sort of cash in. Then... In the sewer, it feeds on the corpses of dogs that were used as test subjects for an experimental growth formula. Oh god, what's that? Even though she seems like a prick, but also like most of his work, right. That's the thing is... A lot of... How do I say it? A lot of creatives in sitcom, especially... I feel like pricks. Isn't it weird how those fucking Father Ted scripts just appeared out of, out of the blue? Need to really written them, they just appeared the same way that IT... Like, I think, oh, wait, sorry, I'm looking up who Ian Uchi is and what he worked on, you know? And yeah, the game does go mute if I click off of it. He's worked on Death of Stalin, which was dog shit. Uh, the Thick of It in the Loop. Uh, he co-created Alan Partridge. Oof. I'm just scroll. I know who he is. Yeah, of uh, yeah I know who he is now. I'm just scrolling down, blah, 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 and Partridge, have I got news for you, which I, I never liked, I, have I got news for you? Anthony Miku, written for Ted, he's no linen, he's no as offensive, and I just don't like him, aye, well, you know what I mean, there was no writer apart from, nobody remembers him at all, was there, oh, he's just the one that is loud enough about it, he, that he never shuts the fuck up, I've written this, and also, all the shitty spouts, you know? After growing over 30 feet, it finally starts to go after humans. It's an extremely... Yes, an extremely edifying movie. Boys, wait, I might be showing my fucking... Leaving school at 15 here. What's edifying mean? Back when I first saw it, I had a pet hamster. I've never seen Black Books here. I've only seen... Because uh, I, I didn't like Mighty, Mighty Bush. Because, uh, I'll be honest, boys. I, 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 I only said no Edmonds again. I can't fucking go him. You know what I'm talking about? No... No... No fielding. That's it. I can't fucking go him in the slightest. But I think IT is a really good cast. Apart from that. Eddie found, like, morally instructive. Ah, I see. Hey, Agent York. What's your first order of business? You're in charge now, remember? Well said, Patricia. 
I was gonna say IT Crowd has a great cast. It does have a good cast, but really I think I'm all I'm saying I just really fucking love Matt Berry. I think that's what I was trying to say. Actually, what we do in the shadows, fucking amazing. I thought Richard Branson was actually pretty good in the Mighty Bush. He was also good in Top Gear. And in uh what you call it? And in Deal or No Deal. I nearly lost sight of my true goal. Actually, I remember something because I remember, I always remember um, my dad showed me Mr. Blobby. It was on, I think it was Noel's house party, and I went, "Oh, it's Mr. Blobby. Who's that on stage?" I'm dad, and my dad just went, "That's Mr. Blobby's dad." Talking about, uh, let's see, Richard Branson. And fuck, I'm, get, I'm getting myself confused with my own fucking shite joke. So for you, so now whenever I see No Edmonds, I just go, huh, "Mr. Blobby's dad." Just sort of think that is as if it was part of my fuck. What was the relation with Mr. Blobby and No, no Edmonds? What was the relation there? Melvin, I couldn't help but notice the name on the side of that truck. This facility is connected to the victim, isn't it? Anyways, back to the case, because I've been sitting talking about fucking Richard Branson, No Edmonds, and the massive, massive oh. transphobes as well, you know? Yeah. I reckon I better start from there. I'm going to tell it to you straight right from the beginning, Mr. York. As you guessed, this warehouse is run by the Clarksons. The victim's father, Danny Clarkson, is the one who manages the whole place. Okay, but why did he choose to store her body in his own warehouse, right? Well, that's because there ain't no other place to store it. So the town's not got a morgue, but it's got tons of wee voodoo shops in the bone alley. Our town has a clinic inside a church, but no more. Whenever someone kicks the bucket, we just bury him in the graveyard right outside of town. But not this time. We got a murder on our hands this time. We need to give Lisa's body an autopsy and keep it stored, right? So we had no choice but to rent out a corner of this warehouse. But you don't just use morgues for murders. No, you use morgues for... You don't just leave the bodies lying out and bury them the next day. Oh, and hospitals and doctors and... and never mind. I see. So that's what led to the ingenious choice to store the victim's body in a facility that her family owns. Anywho, right next to Frozen Burgers, just a deep body. The real story begins. New Orleans is hot to just pure stinking up a storm. Oh, it'd be bogging. Truth is, a few days before you got here, Lisa's body went missing. Missing? Yeah. All of a sudden, poof. Can't say that. Did you leave the warehouse unlocked? I most certainly did not. I locked the whole place up and made sure no one could get inside. No one stole the original key, and I couldn't find any fingerprints at the scene. Oh, we've got a case in our hands. So, in other words, this is a locked room mystery. The body of a beautiful young girl walks at mid- Hey! Alright, alright, CLG. Oh yeah, we found it last uh last time that CLG stands for clever little girl. Reckon I should have told you about this earlier when you first said you wanted to come here. <laughs> it just didn't seem like the time or place as I remember. Anywho, how about we call it a day and head back to my office? You can go through all the files there. No thank you. This is what I came to investigate. But Lisa's body isn't here anymore. You sure? Then where is it? Oh no, it went missing. I see that's why I'm called in. Are you CLG, Mikey? This is like one of the things in high school where it's like, oh, have you got a wee pal there? Or have you got a PC? That doesn't bother me one bit, Melvin. You see, I met a skeletal gentleman on my way here. And he was kind enough to give me an oracle. Oh yeah, we seen a sort of Baron Samadhi or Papa Shango looking guy in a mirror at one point. And Mark was absolutely fine with that. But I think I've said this part before, like in high school, uh, Ned's a company go, have you got a PC at home? And you go, ah, uh, yeah. And they go, uh -huh, that means you've got a personal cock at home. <laughs> Great power. So that, when Kieran said that, that's the sort of flashback I got there. Taking back to being 13 years, a personal arse slicker. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's the worst part. You holding up okay, CLG? Sure you don't want to wait outside. Oh, I'll be fine, Daddy. I was gonna say you dropped your gay card. That's another one. 
they like point down, oh you dropped your gay card and you look down and they go, ha, it means you're gay. Oh, it's fucking high school potter, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's it. <laughs> so selfish and inconsiderate. I'm still not That's a great part. We should we should bring it back, boys. Look, he's talking to himself again. Jack, this is the ambiguous zero. The deep freeze. Let's hurry up and find that flying serpent, shall we? Right, head to the morgue. Right, uh, I'm sorry, it's vending machines. Oh no, it's not a morgue, it's a fucking. I forget, we don't have a morgue here. But do we save here first? Hopefully, it's a count my saves because. Resident Evil does that and then it gives me a pure shape ranking because, right, uh, what have I got in the... Actually, I've got plenty of bullets, I've got plenty of stuff, so I don't need to put anything in the storage. Why are they just Blair Witching it? Okay, never mind. Right, what's through here? Also, I can't let the music, music's getting a bit banging. Quite the fun house. Truly a dazzling place. Meet entertainment. Oh dear. The only way to describe it. Woven together by life, frozen in time, a visceral musical. I'm starting to think that York's maybe a bit of a fucking weirdo. Symphony. We eat all this in order to survive. Yes, truly a symphony. Life and death resonating together. Yeah. It's really cool. The uh, cool? Whoa, now, CLG. Since when were you interested in this kind of stuff? Wait, it's not a slaughterhouse, is it? It's just literally a food storage place, or cold storage place. For, Daddy, I'm more mature than you are. I've seen way more realistic corpses on CSI, you know. <laughs> oh man. At first, sack, I was shocked. By the notion mind when was it? Was it Criminal Minds that Justin Bieber was on and got shot? And everyone, because this was at the height of hating Justin Bieber, they just reposted the bit where he got, like, shot. And also, wasn't Logan Paul on CSI or whatever? But as I gaze upon this hanging garden, I realize it's just another scene of violent, depraved murder. Yes. All we need to do is change our point of view, and things will expose themselves in utterly new ways. Right, so let's use the nope wrong button. Right, can't see anything that the vision's picking up, so Might fuck around and watch five seasons of Law and Order that had the Netflix. That day, oh fuck. Like, it's like that's kinda of, like literally when you're doing something else you just leave it on the back because it is just like you don't need to pay attention to it in the slightest. So I can't put sunglasses on and they'll get the killer at the end of the episode, you know? It's kind of just a, a disposable TV, you know? Like, basically a sitcom, but where, you know... Wait, where am I going? Right, let's talk to this guy first. Hey, uh, Mr. York. This is kind of, um... Yeah. Melvin, if you have something to say, then just... But if we're episodes in a season, man, fucking hell, that's like, that's like fucking sitcom amount. And the thing is, like, they're, how do, they're kind of de not detailed, but it's like, they're not, they're not fucking, like, EastEnders where you can fart out so many episodes a week, but they somehow do that, fucking hell. They must, like I said, Kieran said, they must fucking work. Otherwise, you'll simply be insulting this beautiful landscape. I just clicked on the episode list. Mate, right, how many episodes? Right, one of the thumbnails. Oh god, get it in the set. Put it in the Discord, and I'll get it up on Kyle McLaughlin. Fucking yes, my boy. You, you think this is beautiful? Oh yes, it's the abnormal world that supports our normal lives. It gets about a boy. I remember I was sitting watching. Uh, Years ago, I was I used to work night shift in a petrol station. And I just watched everything just the past time because literally I would work for an hour, and then I'd serve customers that came in. But obviously, I wasn't mate. You get a lot that came in at the start and a lot that came in at the end of the shift. But see, from like 
you'd have a lot of downtime. So I sat and watched anything that was on TV. And one of the things I watched was Agents of the Shield. And I remember randomly one of the characters turns up. It's like someone's dad. And it's like, oh, it's fucking Kyle McLaughlin as Mr. Hyde. I think that's wonderful. Kind of just turns up anywhere, you know? Besides, look. He's in a Tales from the Crypt of being hunted by a vampire. Ooh. Wasn't he also in uh, Desperate Housewives? I never watched that, but I think Megan mentioned that. Patricia seems to be handling this a lot better than you are. Well, uh, you see, I ain't too good with this grotesque stuff. Ugh. Don't let it get to you, Daddy. Have any seen a movie called, I think it's called The Hidden, I want to say? Even you, right, Agent York? The Hidden's fucking class. Yeah, that's right. You gotta have at least one thing. Every single thumbnail's over a shoulder shot with Studio Light and fucking Yes Man. Every episode, here we go. Well, it's, it's the same episode, it's literally the same episode, same script, and they just control F and change a couple of words, you know? Like clowns. Clowns are so funny. How could anyone be scared of them? Zombies? Love them. A bucket full of worms. I could squeeze them with my bare hands. What? The sound of screeching glass. Doesn't bother me. Then... Oh, Mark's gonna say he's not scared of anything, I see. They cling to your skin like putrid leeches, robbing you of much more than your vitality. I mean, I'm terrified of... Oh. Socks. I mean, I'm terrified of jellyfish, so I can't slag anyone for abnormal fears. Melvin, you're a genius. Right, cool. That conversation led nowhere. Right, uh... Let's use a bit of that vision. Something's up here, but... Right, how do I get through here? Oh, there's a door there. Melvin, I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you a personal question. Gives me flashbacks to working at RC during COVID. Every fucking scene was an over shoulder back and forth because that's all they could legally do. Oh yeah, because there was actually like... They were standing like six feet apart, but if they frame it just right, it looks like they're kind of talking, you know? In the hotel parking lot when I first met you, the picture you had on your dashboard happened to catch my eye. Oh yeah, because every shot would look the same. Was that your wife? Am I making this up, Kieran? But didn't you tell me that, like, that they had to, like, get actors' partners in and, like, put wigs on them to pretend it was, like, say, for a, a kissing scene or whatever? Or a scene that they were close, it'd be... Am I making it up or was that not someone else that told me that? Oh, her? Yeah. That's my lady, all right. Candy. Her name's Candy. Oh, dear. The prettiest girl in town, which makes me the happiest boy. A shooting star landed in a rural town, right on top of a man who now has a meteor star. I think I put different... Uh, well, yeah, they kind of, they were kind of desperate for anything that wasn't, like, it wasn't an over-shoulder shot or, like, uh... You know, so they, they were like, how do we differentiate this a little bit? I know, just fucking get a blonde wig on. On Sean, and there we go, yeah. You always keep her photo with you? <sighs> you bet I do. The truth is, Candy's a little sick right now. Oh, no. She can't even leave the house no more. So I always keep her photograph with me. Kind of feels like we're always together, you know? Uh, so we don't have to make a fucking character model for her? I see. You care for your wife a great deal. But this means that... Yeah, that's right. My mama had me before she married Daddy. But it don't matter. He's still my real daddy to me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you, CLG. And you're my pride and joy. That's the way uh, Kieran or Colin talks to Kieran. I've heard the exact same conversation. Well, Zach, isn't this a heartwarming scene? Oh, two seconds, boysies. You think we help Megan in case she dies? Two seconds, boysies.
Oh, why is that not picking up? There we go. Back to it, boozies. But there's one thing I just can't get out of my mind. What is it, Mark? What is it? Don't you think that photograph looked a bit too old? Perhaps Candy is already... No, let's not think about that. It might be a private matter just like you, Zach. What, is he suggesting that Candy's already dead or whatever? Oh, here we go. We've got uh, something important. Let's go have a wee gander about see if it's anything. Nope. I keep bringing the gun out. Just... Right, well, fuck it. Let's go do that. Because we're not really... We're kind of just fucking about this uh, stream, so... I will try and make a little bit of headway, you know? Here we are, Zach. The morgue. They stored the victim's body in a cold storage warehouse operated by her family. I'd love to shake the hand of whoever came up with that one. Hey, Agent York. I mean, it's not the best idea, is it? Did you just come here to laugh at rural officers who are doing the best they can? Absolutely. Why are you raging at me? We don't have any special facilities like you people. What else did you expect us to do, huh? I mean, I don't... Kirky's got a morgue. Kirky's a small town as well. Don't compare us with city folk. This is Lucare. Or maybe you're just disappointed that you didn't get to see the bloated, decomposing corpse of a young girl. Oh God. Sorry, you're right. I went a bit too far just now. Did we? I mean, I feel it. I feel it's quite right to be annoyed that you know someone doesn't have a morgue. But don't misunderstand. I honestly think it's a fantastic idea. I'd never try and bully your daddy. <laughs> Better not. Thank you for understanding. Oh, something shiny in the corner there. Right, search in the morgue. Search morgue for clues about who took Lisa's body. What's that? I got a crawfish claw. Tight space. Sometimes you'll, uh, you'll come across hidden passages that can't not be entered through normal means. However, when you find a suspicious area, you should try looking at it from a different perspective. In other words, press L and crouch to keep moving. Oh boy! What a different perspective. Anyway, here we go. Inspect. What do we see? Inspection start. Right, uh, large footprint. Zach, these are human footprints. And they're extremely large. Yes, Zach, I agree. These footprints must belong to someone who's used to walking around in cold temperatures. Also, they're barefoot. It's not like a shoe. The cunt's cutting a bit. Toes, uh, which got squelching in the ice and all that. Hanging light. Zach, can you see that? Look closely. That's right. There are four imprints in the frost on the top of this. It's hard to believe, but I think these are fingerprints. Holy shit, it's a giant, boys. Yes, Zach, that would lead one to believe that the body napper is a giant who's over 10 feet tall. Yes, man. Boxes that got left behind. I can't tell what's inside. What do you think, Zach? I'm going to go with okra. Yeah, okra. I'm sure it must be okra. That's a staple of the south. What's okra? An icicle. I'm tempted to click uh, click off and have a look, but I'll end the audio so it's production values. Not you know we need to have some sort of some sort of production values. Never thought I'd see one of these down in the south. Right, uh, stray pallet. These pallets are a mess. Looks like this area isn't used often. Still, the idea to store a body here. It's a novel, sophisticated idea unlike anything I'd ever come up with. Right, uh, thermometer on the wall. Let's have a look at that. The thermometer, Zach. It's at 10 degrees Fahrenheit or a minus 12.2 degrees Celsius. This must not be the ambiguous zero. Right, and here we go. Where, oh, is there something else to look at? Styrofoam boxes. I fucking hate styrofoam. There are a few sounds I hate more than the rubbing of styrofoam. Boxes of the past or presents of the future. Either way, this is a curious time capsule. What do you mean, Mark? What do you mean? Forgotten boxes. Looks like shelled headless shrimp. When were these boxes brought here? And when will they be taken away? Why do we call shrimp prawn? Zach, can you feel it? The perpetual, unstoppable flow of time. 
All right, here we go. Where Elise lay. This frost is shaped like something we're very used to seeing. That's right, a body bag. Lisa's body must have been left here, but there are no signs that the bag was dragged away. So it was left to then. So our criminal must possess monstrous strength. Inspection complete. Oh, I've got 65 quid. Class. Seems like our flying serpent isn't here. Is this everything, Melvin? There aren't any other rooms in this warehouse? No special rooms. Well, there is the luxury foods warehouse. Luxury foods? Why didn't you say so earlier? <sighs> just thought you wanted to see where the body... Uh, I mean, I just thought you were only interested in warehouse number two. Besides, it's underground, so it's even colder than this. I wonder if that's where we're going to do the mad shooting stage, because we're not at a shooting stage yet. Uh, you sure you really want to go down there? The darn real freeze to death. Keeping with the dead permission thing, it's probably gotta be a bunch of the shadow people or zombies will pop up. And Mark will go, ah, that's again, or whatever. And then no one will ever mention it. All life will come to an end in the icebound zone. <laughs> you feel me? Let's head there at once. I'm sure that must be where we're meant to go. But, but what about searching for Lisa's body? All we need to do is find a 10 foot tall man with monstrous strength. That giant knows where she is. Ten foot tall? It's getting very Twin Peaks here again. Finding the flying serpent is more important right now. Now please, guide me to the luxury foods warehouse at once. These luxury foods are most likely being used in local Cajun cuisine. Though, so, I've not read up about it, but, uh, supposedly, see how the first one was just Twin Peaks? Supposedly this one is just True Detective. Now, I've not seen True Detective. I really want to. Specifically, I've heard the first season is very, very good. I'm so excited to see what we'll find. Aren't you, Zach? And I've heard, was it the last season was maybe pretty good as well? So I'll get around to it eventually. The flying serpent must be lurking in the luxury foods warehouse. Oh, the flying serpent must be the fucking parter that, what's his name? The Baron Samadie looking guy. Probably. I'm not really getting a lot of true detective from this so far. It's more so... Basically, the way this is set up early on is your... This is set in 2005, but, but in uh, 2018, I think it's set. 2020, maybe. You're a, a detective called Aaliyah Davis, who's actually one in the body pillow. She's, uh, she's uh, interrogating Mark about a case that happened back in the day, and he's like, addic he's, like addicted to... What is it? He's addicted to it. Oh, he just, sm he just smokes weed, sits in his house a lot, you know? And they're sort of interrogating him about a case that happened in the past. Which, from what I read up, is how it's a framing device they use in True Detective Season 1. But that's all I know about it. Because I've intentionally not read up in case I spoil True Detective for myself. The elevator needs a key, Mr. York. Do you have one? Actually, no. I didn't think you'd ever want to go down there, so I didn't bother to go and get one. Well, then would you go and get one now? Uh, yeah, yeah. COG, I know. I'll tell it to him straight. Uh, thing is, Mr. York, you know the Clarksons? The folks who own this place? I has a farm. Punched a producer as an absolute arsehole. Well, they don't too much like the police. It's okay, near die. They sure as hell don't like them when they're mocked. Oh no, 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 no. I mean, that isn't terrible, Jeremy Clarkson, probably. It was, uh, real hard for me to get permission to open up this place for you to search through. So they ain't gonna be too happy if I go back to them now, asking for another key. What should we do then? Let's just find a worker here who can lower the elevator for us instead. All they need to do is take a break from their work for a couple minutes. Then what am I supposed to do? Just stand here and pretend like nothing's happening? Yeah, you FBI folks are good at that, right? That's always what I see you doing on TV. I mean, yeah, we had fucked off and went and done a side quest for a while, so... Special agent man. Acquire the elevator key and head to the luxury foods warehouse. Right, let's use vision to see who's got... Key. Zach, I think we can move this. Better check back here as well, just to be on the safe side. 
Oh man, everything about this game is just the movement, the animations. Oh, it's a bit. Oh, it's a bit rough. Can I talk to you? Nope. Did I see some red over there? I did. How does the vision come back? Does it? Hey, I can push this, can't I? Oh yeah, Protomia, have you been playing Tekken recently? I've seen they put in updates with actual wrestler outfits. Are they free or are they battle pass? Because I'm not fucking paying for customize customization pieces that probably should have been in the game at the start because they were in every fucking other Tekken game. Right, uh, a bit stuck here. I haven't assumed. Uh, well, let's think, see if they're the the free, well not free, but see if it's like Tekken credits or whatever. I don't mind then. But see, not take credits, but see, you know the ones you can actually earn, or the ones that, yeah, I don't know, I don't mind there, but see if it costs money, fuck that shit. Because I'm seeing everyone making like a Triple H and stuff like that. Because I remember, I, I one of the things I always done was I always made a Macho Man King. Always done that. And I couldn't really do it. I felt the customization in this one was a lot more, like, it was better in some regards, but a lot more limited in some most regards, you know? All right, pal, how you doing? ...ability to adapt is a frightening thing. Some humans have the power to sleep anywhere as long as they set their minds to it. Oh, I can do that. I fell asleep in the lava a couple of nights ago. All right, wakey, wakey. Oh, no, we just picked pocket. Never mind. A key for the elevator leads to the luxury foods warehouse. Now we should be able to operate the elevator. No need to worry. This facility no longer has a body to steal. What else do they have to lose? A few cans of crawfish? I feel bad for him, but it's for the sake of the investigation. I'll write him a letter of apology later. Like, the thing is, the fighting is probably the best it's ever been, but I've just fell off it so hard, and... It's just the introduction of Battle Pass really fucking soured it for me, because... Right. I'm making, I'm making it sound like I'm going to defend the Battle Pass, I'm really not, but see if a Battle Pass is in Overwatch, for example. Overwatch is a free-to-play game. Like, I still don't like Battle Passes, I hate, actually I hate Battle Pass because you pay for content that you might not get. So it's like you pay for the luxury of unlocking content, you know? At least if you're going to do it, do it like Halo Infinite, where these Battle Passes, if you buy them, never expire, you know? Mr. York, did you find a key? But the fact is, like, I bought Tekken full price when it first came out. I even got a wee, it was like the, what edition was it? It was like the Vengeance edition or whatever the fuck, you know? It, it wasn't more expensive, it was just it came with like a wee metal, it was like a metal box and, you know. So, and the fact that it's like, yeah, it's battle passes, you know? Ha, now that's my special agent. It's like DLC that you hey, actively no need to work to unlock. And if you don't, you don't get your DLC. Wanna head straight down? You bet. Let's sally forth, Melvin. And again, in free-to-play games, I'm not saying they're okay, but they're better in free-to-play games because I, I, that's just the way I look at it, you know? Zach, look at that thermometer. Zero degrees Fahrenheit. Or minus 17. But it's the fact that Tekken's Celsius. also got DLC characters and the battle pass, and I just, no, 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 no. Why can't we just get a DLC? And we had, like, do you remember uh, Mortal, the first Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 9? Well, not the first one, you, you know what I mean? The first reboot Mortal Kombat. So, what I did was when new characters came out, like, say, like Freddy Krueger or whatever, Kenshi, whatever DLC characters, they had compatibility passes that came out or compatibility packs so you had to use, have them so people could, so you could play against people that had the characters but they come with, with uh, costumes so you're like oh fine I'll download them you know the first Mortal Kombat night well the first of the reboot Mortal Kombat's Mortal Kombat it, it's the whole timeline's a nightmare now there's now two Mortal Kombat 1's and one of them is actually Mortal Kombat 10 it's hard to explain this is the ambiguous zero how you doing, Jason? 
Hey, Avery! Open the damn door, Avery! Oh, it ain't no use, Mr. York. You're a sleepy lad. And you've got a whole five or six hours of Elden Ring ahead of you. Once Avery starts working on something, that's all he sees. He just tunes out everything else. We'll have to wait until he finishes and comes out to us, I reckon. Or we could come back tomorrow. I disagree, Melvin. Time may be on our side, but that doesn't mean we should waste it. So what's the part? Are you doing a new playthrough or are you doing like random fog gates? I'm not quite sure. You gave me Mr. Alligator precisely for moments like these, didn't you? Wait, Mr. York! Those tranquilizers may be non-lethal, but it's still dangerous to use them on humans! We're fine, we're fine. Of course, Melvin. I never said I was going to shoot him. Oh, I'm shooting the meat that'll fall on him, I see. Shoot some meat to get his attention. A fresh playthrough of item slash enemy slash fog gate randomizer, but in a dungeon crawling mode. So no open world shenanigans. Ah. Straight to the meat. Imagine open world leads to could potentially lead to a lot more uh, game breaking stuff. Or like, you know, you get to places you physically can't get forward. If you get If you get my meaning. Look at Mark's dodge here. Look at this fucking Elden Ring ass dodge. Did on World 1 and I couldn't finish it after 40 hours. Yeah, fuck that shit. Yoo hoo. Can you open the door for me, please? I was actually looking at potentially doing a Dark Souls 1 randomizer. But then I seen how glitchy they can be. An agent from the FBI. Oh, he could be a 10 foot giant that stole the body. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Uh, please call me York. York. Uh, you a smarty pants. Hmm? I like everyone's clue designed for certain areas, and yeah. <sighs> it's the fact you can get bosses that just don't spawn in and just die. Come on, just settle down, Avery. Tell him what this here place is for. Because I think it was the rando I watched. It was I think they got I was a see the scale at the start in the but because he spawned outside of the area, he couldn't fall through the hole and just died. And I was like, that's a bit anticlimactic, you know. So I gotta guard it. I see. So you're this area's keeper. Oh, I help with the research too. I do like research. Um. Research? What are you talking about, Avery? This doesn't look like a lab to me. Oh, ain't no lab. It's a warehouse. Ain't no lab. I did the Premonition 1 had such a... Oh, there's Sean. Oh boy, my does the research. He's my sweet cheese. My good time boy. No smarty pants. No. Thank you, Sean. You know, it, Deadly Permission 1 had such a sensitive a bad guy. Uh, representation of someone who dresses in opposite sex clothes. But I've got a feeling that this is going to be a nice wee, you know, this is going to be as sensitive, I can imagine. I mean, it's true that he's free to come and go as he pleases in this warehouse, but... No, as far as I can tell... I really want to start a new Elden Ring save, but also want to start a new DS1 run, and the psychic damage is causing me to do nothing. Lisa's body must be at least 10 feet tall. There's only one thing for it, DS2. New playthrough of Dark Souls 2. Oh fuck. Exactly Dan knows. Billy's chud to stop talking about Dark Souls and this deadly premonition to a stream. I think I'm one of the few streamers that hasn't played Dark Souls 2. Thank fuck. Please. What? Hey, cut it out! Please. Why? Avery, that's not Lise. Not Lise? This is Melvin's daughter. And my precious assistant. Jason, it's uh... Fortunately, Elise I'm getting the Samurai Cop 2 off of it, if you know what I mean. Lise! Lise! Oh dear. My fault! My 
Also, I've not shot one shadow person yet, so... He, uh, I guess he's sort of like Lise, you know? Let's see. Why is Sheriff Woods allowing Mort unlimited access to his daughter? You know how normal kids tease other kids in order to get attention? Well, with this big lug, sometimes folks who don't know him too well see something and end up calling the police. But I know that deep down... I love how she's just allowed to, allowed to join us on a murder investigation. I'll keep him busy, but I'd appreciate it if you'd hurry this particular inspection along. Just holler at me if you find anything. I reckon that'll make it easier for you to go do your thing, yeah? Melvin, I think you're finally starting to catch on. Right. My god, we have made little to no progress in this. Fucking hell. Right, the flying serpent. Find the flying serpent in the luxury foods warehouse. What could the flying serpent mean? We got a clue from a uh, voodoo man in the mirror. Avery, this box looks special. I mean, dragonfly, maybe. Box and food mm. for their home. Melvin, is this the Clarkson's family crest? <laughs> oh, the dragonfly? Yeah, that's the Clarkson's mark, all right. My family crest is a fucking like a warthog. Fucking shit. Ain't no big deal though. You can find those all over town. Is that so? Well, yeah. They pretty much run all of this. Well, as well as your family, Chris. Yeah. I do believe they own just about everything. They That's own. when you know I'm like struggling partner wise. I'm like, boys, family, Chris, Moan, get them out. They got the whole darn town tattooed with their dragonflies. I can't even walk a few steps without seeing one. I'm not a toy. I don't have one. Zach. This dragonfly is our flying serpent. The flying serpent owns this town. I knew it. They're related to Lise Clarkson, our victim. And Hoongan's oracle pointed us toward their family crest. The Clarksons must be deeply intertwined with this case. Mine's a knight's helmet. Ah. I think I've had enough of this frozen world. Let's head back out to that merciless sun. Oh yeah, they're bargain. Absolutely bargain. Well, what are you waiting for? I can't bear to spend another second down here. Can you find James May which to have in boxes now? Oh yes, man. Kieran and Jason are related. I knew it. The Richard Branson surely I, I fucked up last time, boys. Leave me alone. What do we do now, Mr. York? Zach and I will take things from here. Uh then what should I do? Tend to your sick wife? I don't know. You're free to do as you please. I'll stop by the sheriff's office when I need your help again. I suppose that's what I'll do then. It'll sure make Candy happy. <laughs> but I am the sheriff of this town, so I do intend to get some work done. I know. How about I search for Lisa's body while you're busy? There's so many cutscenes here. There's so many. Not a bad idea. Have we had mum yet? No, our mum's... Our mum's sick, I think. Just be careful that you don't get attacked by a barefooted giant. Hey, don't scare me like that. Why do you keep talking about that giant anyway? Because we've seen giant barefoot fucking footprints in the... In the fucking morgue, you know? You really think some giant was mottos? Apparently, uh, yes, man. Apparently, the tr uh, translation to my surname's motto is hardness. Hard as fuck, lads. Yes, man. Jason Hardness. Melvin, don't be silly. Of course I do. For a split second, I bet Jason was shitting himself. I was just gonna say his second name there. It's okay. Kier's already done it a thousand times. Just when I thought you were starting to catch on. This oh fuck! Skip that bias. But how can you be so sure? I want to see some proof. Proof number one. The footprints that led up to where Lisa's body originally was were made with bare feet. None of the prints looked similar to those of common insulated boots, and the arches of the feet were visible. The person who carried out Lisa's body must have had very large feet. I'd say they were at least 16 inches. Looking at my feet. My feet are big, but don't they that big? Proof number two. Origins available England. Yes, man. Traitorous scum, Jason. 
Actually, the thing is, I'm more... So, I've got an Irish second name. But I'm literally more I English than I'm Irish. I found fingerprints on the cord of one of the hanging lights in the warehouse. Sean just wants, wants the archers back. The fingerprints weren't aimed up from below. They were coming directly from the side. He just wants to cut a boot and sit in, sit in the alien wars and have a great wee time. Clearly, the giant moved the light because it was in his way. I'm going to start with dungeon crawling. Enjoy this shite. I'll, be, I'll give you a wee raid uh, soon, Jason. He pinched the cord with his fingers. Proof number three. There was nothing else found in the vicinity where Lisa's body was stored. This means the giant carried her out without dragging her across the floor. But there's only one set of footprints. The only conclusion I can draw from this evidence is that a barefooted giant standing over 10 feet tall carried Lisa's body out. Case closed. That's it. That concludes the entirety of my proof. Any objections, Melvin? But there ain't no way a human could ever be that tall. Have you seen every human alive with your own eyes? My god, Mork. There's like a 10 footer cutting a bit somewhere. You need to forget all your preconceived notions when embarking on an investigation. What I like, I know, that's something... That's, that's like pure child patter, bringing out, well, have you seen everyone? I well, you don't know then, do you? Whether you come face to face with a 10 foot giant or a skeletal gentleman, you always need to accept everything that comes to you with a clear mind. I like humans name every human. Have you ever seen a man eat his own head, Patricia? Do that, and eventually the truth will reveal itself to you. You're a smart kid. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. <laughs> I'm sorry I ever doubted you, <laughs> Mr. FBI yeah, Special yes, man. Agent, sir. A sharp eye and flawless observational skills. Uncovering the truth with a heady intuition. I feel like this has got like fucking Mel it's like Mel gets all four levels of cutscene, you know? Ever question you again. Heck, I'll do whatever you say. That's it, Melvin. I'm glad you finally caught on. Fuck me, man, is this combo still happening the fuck? Is this an episode of RC circa twenty twenty? Fuck me. Come work, tell us about another obscure movie. Time to go, Patty. He told us about Alligator, a 1980s movie about an alligator that gets flushed in the toilet. A pet one, who then eats the bodies of dead dogs that are in the sewer who have a serum in them and it grows to like 30 feet tall. You know this town well, so I'd like you to accompany me from now on. Oh, for fuck, we've stole this Wayne again. Patty? He's just fine with his daughter being kidnapped by this stranger. Zack, we found the Flying Serpent. Now we simply need to locate the Ten Maidens. It's time to head on to Alexis's diner and lane. Oh, I need to... What time are we on? Oh my god, it's only half eleven. Oh, I need to go... Wait, how do... where's the hotel? I need to go sleep somewhere for a while. I want to see him explain why I actually watched Deadly Prey. Was that on we watched, Sean? Evangelical Church. Right, we're we'll gonna head to Casa Pineapple so we can go for a wee sleep until. No, don't erase the waypoint. How do I, how do I leave the map? There we go. What was when we what raw force? That was it. Where it was just nothing but like Cameron Mitchell just leching on women. And then zombies popped up in the last 10 minutes or so. Oh, yeah, mind that guy who had like the handlebar mustache and like the skullet. And Jason was like, oh, I don't know if we'll be able to find him, and he literally searched, like, Rough Force Weird Hair, and the guy popped up. What one is... What's the, what's the Deadly, play, uh, Deadly Prey? What one's that, Sean? Can't I fucking talk. And yes, I did only say Deadly... Deadly Prey. Oh, I was hoping I could do a, a wee ollie over it or something like that. Yeah, it's no Tony Hawk's underground, you know? 
But you will be able to see good skating on Jason's stream on... I don't know when he's doing that, but someone chose Tony Hawk's 4. Which is one of my favourites of the series, Behind Underground. Tony Hawk's 4 and obviously Tony Hawk's Underground 2. I don't know. I've not played that in the past, like Tony Hawk's Underground 2. So American Wasteland might be really good. I'll have no clue. Tony 4 was the first one I had. Uh, it was the one I had and the one I played the most and my favourite. I mean, like I, said, I remember really enjoying it. Daily Prey was the David Pryor one. Uh, bad guys hunting a stack dude in the jungle for sport. Ah! Karen Mitchell's already in, De in Deadly Prey as well. Is that the close the fucking door? Is that that one? I need to go for a sleep until... Until I think it was... 10 till 6 in the morning. I had to sprint up. Wait, where's my room? Oh, of course, it's the like the grand suite or the. No, no, that's a restaurant. Get Jason out of here. Heart theft and self promotion. Fucking grab him by his scrawny wee legs and chuck him out. Out of the video store, you're barred. Wait, where's my fucking room? Do I need to talk to the front desk, maybe? Coffee, coffee. I need cigarettes to pass the time. Or maybe it's... Oh no, there it is. Never mind, I've been taking the wrong door. Whoops. Aren't I, silly Billy? There's York's room there. Also, but look at the fucking size of this hotel room. Oh, they've got a cup chair. Oh no, there's the cup couch. You can sit and watch. Anyway, let's, uh... No, we're fine for our outfit now. I feel like this has got a lot more at hand. The because that was just one photo that was there before. What is a stock photo of a ninety balloon? Anyways, back to the case. King size, made in France. It looks soft enough to alleviate all our exhaustion. Zach, even though the Bureau is paying for this, it's still tiring to have to live out of hotel rooms day after day. Nothing beats getting a good night's sleep in your own room. Get some shut eye. Let's wake up. Yeah, by the time I get there, so we have a wee 12 hour nap. Ah, yes, Mark's lovely own room. The one that's just full of DVDs and fucking filth. Night has fallen, so Patricia went home. Oh, thank fuck. Oh, no, we're hungry. Wait, hotel fee at 100? What? Where's all my money going? Uh, I thought I was... Look at some coffee. What's that do? Nope. A lollipop. A lollipop. And a donut. There we go. See if I get attacked by crocodiles because it's fucking night time outside. I'm going to scream. Over five miles travel bonus. I think I get money by doing side quests because fuck me, I'm going to need a lot more money. In the first game, you never had, like, I was never rich, but I was never worrying about it, you know? Right. Uh, 
Nope, that's items. That's wrong bits. The maps here, yeah. And I am going to... Where was that women's house? Where was that? Miss Carpenter's house. There we go. And it's the yellow waypoint we're going for. Nope, wrong button. Hold on, what's up? What's up, Sean? What's the matter? Why does it skip? Oh, I think it's the flashlight on our jacket, but that's a good point. Mark thinks of everything, so he does. What's this? My attention's been pulled over by something. What's this? Drums. Start a fire drum to keep animals and red shadows away. Effectively creating a safe zone. What? What is this? I got a pigeon feather. Animals and red shadows? I feel like they've not explained anything there. I mean, I got attacked by squirrels at one point. Talk, uh... Hey, Zach, it looks like we were right on... Oh, no, it's been, it's been interrupted because I ran into a wall. Maybe to show how mental Mork is. Low quality plate. There are no red shadows that Mork thinks there are. I also had animals, so I got attacked by squirrels. They stole one of my rubber bullets. Oh. So, what do you think of him? Yes, I'm talking about him. Hunda, is the skeletal gentleman friend or foe? Or does he merely exist outside the realms of either? Still too early to tell. But it's clear that he'll be the key to uncovering this case's mysteries. That's what my soul... Oh, the Baron Samadhi guy? <sighs> Let's steal someone's mail. I got a, qu a quality bead. Man, the time goes by so slow in this. It's like it's the turning is that much of a nightmare that I try to rag it off the board. Did you notice it yet? The streets in New Orleans were a mess. All busted up and undergoing maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the ground is soft. All it takes is some heavy rain to cave it all in. There were also a lot of places where large tree roots were pushing up parts of the asphalt and the sidewalk. Those bumps were... Oh, now we've got a cutscene. Never mind. Oh, wait. Oh! There's red sky and thunder and shit like that. Lakar's other world from midnight to 6 a.m. Lakar descend descends into the other world. Red shells appear during this time, but only outside out visibly affected. Facilities will operate as normal. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fuck, it's Jimmy Scissors! <laughs> Fucking scissor men have just popped out. <laughs> Mr. Alligator. Not sure how much help you'll be in this situation, but I guess you're better than nothing. What the? Zach, I don't even need to say it, do I? This is right out of that movie. Videodrome. Videodrome. Yeah, it's a new one. Directed by David Cronenberg. At the time, it was seen as a hard movie to digest for normal moviegoers, but now it's become a cult classic. I always just saw it as another weird Canadian movie, but this changes everything. My arm and my gun have become one. Now I can really understand what Max was going through. Oh dear. Psycho gun controls. Held, held down the fire button to charge the psycho gun. Aim it towards the enemy to lock on. Then release the button and fire a homing bullet. In this game, time is a flat circle. Always continues to pass. Passing time may affect certain events where not you can do it in certain areas.
What the fuck is going on? Lads, I'm so confused. This is taking such a massive turn. Hey, picked up some rubber bullets. Let's go put the wrong button. There we go. Let's place the, the alligator figure down by our house. Perfect. I love no one else is going to mention. Oh, my dear lost lamb. What are you doing there? Oh, this? Nobody's got to mention anything about the Shadow the Shadow Scissor Boys at all. Something important, hmm? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Very important. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Just call me York. Please call me York. Yes. That's what everyone calls me. But what should I call you? I'm Tyrone Sanders, pastor of the Lucare Evangelical Church. Never mind the red sky, you know what? Big Tyrone Sanders, what a guy. And what business does a pastor like yourself have in a place like this? Well, I live over across the way there. What was that? Oh. Have an intimate relationship with Mrs. Carpenter? Oh, are they pumping? Why, why in the world would you suggest such a pitiful thing? Lordy, lordy. How could I ever become intimate with one who is so devoid of faith? After she lost her husband, she stopped coming to church. All she does all day is bowl. She even pruned the shrubbery in that pitiful fashion. Yes. Truly pitiful. Mm. Mm. Oh dear, oh no. And did you see that hideous ox of a dog she owns? Pitiful with a capital P. He fucking hates dogs. Well, that's about like buddy. With her, but she shows no intention of changing her ways. Yes, I fear she never lends an ear when the good Lord reaches out to her. He hates dogs as well. I pity her from the bottom of my heart. So you've been spying on her out of pity? Spying? I mean, we are on... She's sleeping in there, and we're just having this big conversation out in the front. careful, too. This town harbors much more danger than you're aware of. I can see that with the red sky and all that. need of salvation, feel free to stop by our church whenever you like. Our church also functions as a clinic. Someday, you may need our help. Zack, did you hear that? Pitiful. Try saying that to someone in the city. They'd instantly slap you with slander or defamation charges. You'd be up to your neck in court papers. I doubt I'll tire of this town anytime soon. We should consider stopping by that church whenever we get a chance. Mark likes not having consequences for any of his actions. Well, like so here. Hey, we head to the Lane and Diner. Ah! Jimmy Scissors popped out of nowhere. Can't wait to tell Jason that fucking Jimmy Scissors popped up in this game. Doug, help! Doug! Wrong button again. I've got Mort's got the fucking Videodrome gun arm. Thing is, this is more the wild I want in the game. So I could fight them and probably just try and get stuff from them. Like stuff for the upgrades and that. Let's uh let's just head to the diner, try and try and get the ball perfect ten the now. That's where I get stuck for ages and just can't bowl at all. The only bowling game I'm good at is uh Tekken Bowling, uh, specifically in Tekken Dark Resurrection. Right, we got a safe zone. So they can't come in here. But can I just... I can just sit here and use that on them. Wait, why am I using that and not using the mad gun arm? Oh no! 
Why am I just using the normal pistol? Or at least it's acting just like my normal pistol. I'm so confused. Right. I'll, and we'll kill this one and we'll call it a day. Oh, that three of them popped up. Is there like an infinite amount of them that's gonna pop up? First aid kit and some sort of fragment or something. Right, I'll get some, I'll kill a few more. Because maybe I can make one. Ah, oh, Jesus! Oh fuck, Jimmy says it's that way. There we go, and. Ankin, Num, and Capitano Fragment, whatever that is. Fuck! Oh, it's okay, I've got iframes when I do that. Right, where, where am I going now? Oh, wait, never mind. The Bowling Green's just here. Oh, not Bowling Green, the Bowling. Excuse me. Looks like a case of bad timing, Zach. Let's come back later. Right, what time does it open at? It doesn't say. Wait, is there anywhere that I can rest? Because I can't really afford to go back to the hotel. Let's go towards whatever this thing is. This is hopefully, or it's gonna be a fucking. Maybe I can fall asleep on a bench or something like that. Or maybe it'll be just another fucking, uh, what you call it? Thing that I can burn. The drum, that's the word. Right, here we go, here we go boys, we've nearly escaped. Oh, it's a house. Whose house is this? Looks like a case of bad. T Let's come back later. Oh God, there's a scissor man right behind me, isn't there? Yep. Right. Uh, there's a bed here. Let's go. Oh, at least I think it's a bed. I just need to buy better cigarettes because I've only got cigarettes like past an hour, and we're not even we're not even half an hour into the fucking other world. I'm not gonna lie, boys. I think it's game to play Minecraft and just have it during the night. That's when all the zombies come out and shit like that. Or not even the zombies, just random scissor men. Speaking of scissor men, boys, I'm very excited. Very excited for Clock to Rewind. Like, they've done a crazy amount of work and stuff and put and just making it this new... This new thing, I'm just... Oh, can't wait for it. Is this a secret Persona game? Oh god! Oh Jesus! Zack, it appears to be closed. Let's come back during business hours. Now why did I get the animation for the fucking bed there? Right, how do I get the map up again? Oh, that's okay. Uh, that's right here as well, isn't it? Yeah. Or it's like 200 this way. The Casa Pineapple, whatever it's called. I hope we see more of your man, the fucking, uh, what you call it? The owner and the one staff member of this whole hotel. 
Hope we see more of him. How'd I get, how'd I get off the... There we go. And I'll see if I can maybe sell some stuff, because I picked up a lot of shit there. Wait, is there a shop anywhere? Paul. We always strive to provide our guest with the finest of service, sir. Our humble bucolic town does have its inconveniences. Shopping in particular can be a bit of a slog. Therefore, we decided to provide a modest selection of daily necessities right here at our very own front desk. Great. Sounds convenient. Exactly. What daily necessities have they got? Rubber bullets, first aid kits, and coffee. I think I'll buy a couple of cigarettes. A couple of heavy cigarettes. And food wise, butter cookie. I might sell. Uh, just what do I not need? Antidote. Any expensive materials I picked up? A crawfish claw. Uh, nothing much. Don't hesitate to let me know if you're in need of anything, sir. Would you mind if I asked you just one question, concierge? By all means, please ask me whatever you like, sir. Do you run this entire hotel all on your own? I mean, just the three of them? I mean, we've not seen a janitor or a cleaning staff yet, so I assume it may be him and a other, like, I'm guessing Scottish. Yes, that is correct, sir. Oh, that's all three of his, per his personas? Oh, that's a shame. So you, or the three of you, own the entire place? Oh, heavens no, sir. The chef, the bellboy, and myself are all mere employees at this fine hotel. So the Clarksons own this place, too? <laughs> Not quite, sir. This hotel opened its doors long before the Clarksons came to prominence. Impressive. No wonder this building has such a dignified air to it. Indeed. This is probably the only building in all of Lucare that has managed to retain its original appearance. So who's the owner? I simply must know the name of the person who had the fortune and sense to come into possession of such a fine building. <clears throat> the owner of this hotel is none other than David Jawara, sir. Zach, that's the fourth David. Ooh! It all makes sense now. It'd be stranger if only the owner was a completely different person. I sincerely hope I get a chance to meet him during my stay here. If I may, Mr. Morgan, sir, I don't think that's such a good idea. Oh, is our person one is like, is this is one way he can go act out all of his fucking weird sort of. He's like, oh no, that was so and so that did that, not me. Why not? Unfortunately, our owner has a bit of a personality problem. The three of us here describe him as having a fractured mind. You don't say. Okay, right, let's go to bed then. Where's my room? Oh, it's up here again. I've got notes, head to Lexus, we'll do that, get a strike, collect a dish, pop to the mirror and create a voodoo charm, we've not got stuff for a voodoo charm yet. Do we save first? Open. Does Mark, will, will we shave Mark or will we keep him clean shaven? Actually, we'll let him grow a bit. I want to see how far a beard can go. Nine hours sleep. There we go. The bowling alley should be open at that time. Right, I didn't lose any money for the hotel there, so maybe I just pay per day, maybe? Anyway, your old dad needs to hit a fucking perfect 10. Or that's what the fucking Baron Samady guy told me. I forget his name's not. Is it Hon? Honman? Something like that? Right. Let's get to it.
Right, we got us, boys. We got us. Easy peasy. I'm good at the bow and so am. So, boys, uh, we'll be streaming tomorrow. I'm not quite sure what time at, but... Sorry for the wait, Patty. I should be here there all night. But anyway, we'll be playing uh, Eggs of Steel. We'll try and finish it tomorrow because fuck me, Eggs of Steel is... Uh, it, it's trying on my patience. Whatever. Is Mrs. Carpenter here? No, she hasn't come in today. Everything's going according to plan. Oh, because she's got the, she got scared of the wee totem on our fucking the, was it the mad alligator thing? It's time to knock down the ten maidens, Zach. Right, here we go, boys. Here we go. Let's get a strike. Oh my lord, y'all are back. Listen up, y'all ain't gonna believe this. What's wrong? Mrs. Carpenter hasn't come in. For oh no, what a shame. In 10 years, what could it be? I just hoping nothing bad happened to her. She's fine. You have my guarantee. That sounds a bit grim, Mork. Oh my lord. I reckon if an FBI agent like you is convinced, then I should be too. What did I tell you, Patty? Value is a relative thing. We needed to find that figurine, no matter the cost. Life lessons with Mark. Right, let's go. Part of this done. You really wanted to bowl that bad? They don't have bowling alleys in the city no more? Wrong, Patty. I have absolutely no interest in bowling. Tossing a heavy ball at lined up pins? Where's the fun in that? You can't even call this a sport. It's a game for cavemen. Nonsense. Utter nonsense. I was gonna say, it's not in the Olympics, is it? Not even Commonwealth Games. Maybe, maybe bowls. I'm not quite sure. Then, can I throw the ball instead? Oh, I nearly fucking slid off my chair there. Absolutely not, Patty. This is part of the investigation. I need to do this myself, no matter how stupid it may be. You're the one who's stupid. Sure looks like you're having fun to me. I guess he's not a, f a fan of the best film, Kingpin. I have never seen Kingpin. Isn't Big Lebowski kind of a bit bowling as well? And the G and Jesus Bowls. What a fucking shite movie. Or Jesus Rolls, that's what it's called. Right, uh, seven. So we can go 16, 7, 10, 13. Let's go for 10. So I need to get a strike. Bastard. Failure, I know. Let's go a bit heavier. Right, come on, come on, come on. Motherfucker. I'm gonna be here for fucking ages now, aren't I? Let's try the heaviest boy. Right, come on, come on, it's got to be it. Come on. Oh, come on, Dave, fuck. Right. Sean, you're a bowler. What's the theory here? You bastard. I don't bowl. I it was just an off chance that I might, I might have been right. Right, uh, stance adjustment, so maybe if I'm like this and I come on more this way. Damn it. Ah, I knew that was fucked. I was a wee bit off there. Get used to hearing that. Ba -da -da Let's try to throw it in an angle here. Maybe if I twist it so it's more... Damn it. Went too far. It may end up in the... Yep. Fuck that one. Da -da -da. Right. So will we beat us in under 10 tries? Because we're on the fourth try now. So this is the fifth try, I believe. Right. Here we go. Fifth try. Yes! I'm the best. Awesome. 
It's no Wii Sports, I'll tell you that. Oh, fuck, she's back. <laughs> Looks like I finally earned myself a rival. That was just a stroke of luck, Mrs. Carpenter. Despite how I may seem, I've never been any good at any of the ball-based sports that exist here on our planet. Oh, no. You can't fool me. I can tell the FBI's giving you very special training. If I gave you a few lessons... Oh, dear. Oh, no. That, I'm sure you'd be able to go semi-pro. Semi-pro? That's right. That's what I said. Not pro, but semi-pro. Uh, semi. Yes, semi-pro. You'd never be able to go pro. You don't have what it takes. You could become a semi-pro if you tried really hard, though. I got one movie, semi-pro. What's who's in semi-pro? Is that not the one with Christopher Walken? That's balls. That's balls of fury. I'm thinking of. Well, I guarantee it. Come back and see me when you feel like giving it a try. Is semi-pro not like a Will Ferrell one, or? I'm sure, my husband would forgive me if I let someone like. You borrow my lane. Well, we gotta give youngsters a chance to grow. That's what we always say. Well, fire on Woody Harrelson, I Basketball one. Oh, never seen it. I could actually go semi-pro. I'd take her words with a grain of salt if I were you. Patricia, I can understand why you'd be envious of my talents. I mean, it didn't it take us five turns to hit that, but we'll stay quiet about that. You don't need to worry. You have your own unique talents, just like any other person. You shouldn't have to feel inferior every time you look at me. You're unbelievable. You sure you don't need to get your head checked out? It's so strange, Zack. I feel like I'm discovering a new side to myself. By the way, Mr. Special Agent... You said you're investigating the Lease Clarkson incident, yes? Oh, oh, oh! So I completely zoned out there, boys. He's completely, com utterly zoned out. Great, great content. Me just staring into the void while, while just no thoughts are going through my head. Amy, anyway, she's uh, we're investigating the, the thing. Yeah, we are. In that case, there's something you should know. Oh, spill, spill the beans, hen. Spill the beans. That she was a druggy. Oh no. And she was into the really bad stuff. Red powder. Oh, no wonder the FBI picked you. You already figured out that much. Well, that was the Saint Saint Joan, was it? Well, the reason Lise turned into such a little hoodlum is because of her mother, Galena. Oh, Galena was that uh was that angry woman that we met in the voodoo shop who, yeah, made me feel certain emotions when she was accosting me, but we'll stay quiet about that. Galena. Mm-hmm. A mother only in name. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, she's still nothing more than a child herself. Oh, oh I skipped that by accident. Giving birth to children. If these aren't the end times, well, I don't know what is. Oh, and they were always cooped up in that jazz bar. Galena wouldn't know proper parenting if it hit her in the tush. Zach, the jazz bar. Well, no, we'll, we'll be heading up next. I first heard about it from Patricia. It must be deeply connected with this case. I wonder if we'll just have our scene like... You know, the Twin Peaks one where it's just uh, the jazz bar and they're sitting singing, they actually don't fucking did the permission one. I wonder if that will happen again. The red powder. It must be San Rouge. San Rouge, not St. John. Cool, got you. San Rouge. Following the Oracle and felling the Ten Maidens sure paid off, didn't it? So, Mr. Special Agent, are you all finished here? Yes, Mrs. Carpenter. Thanks to you, I've gotten a new lead. Oh. Then how about you mosey on and let me get back to my bowling? Oh, she's fucking raging. I need to bowl my first game of the day or else I'm gonna get rusty. Well, what are you waiting for? Get a move on! Shoo! Shoo! Right, there we go. Get a strike. Cool, we've done that. Bowling has been unlocked. It's okay, but I'm gonna be digging into the bowling. Isn't that a bit stupid to put the 
Couldn't you have the exit up here? As opposed to having to walk down where you can get cunted by a fucking ball. But anyway, what do I know? Oh, there he is. It's your boy. When the sun awakens, catch the tip of the baby bear's tail at the false altar. At the entrance to the other world will reveal itself to you. Why has Mark never mentioned the fact he's it's dealt with like it's another oracle. Shadow people it or the other world before? A mysterious power. This oracle is a simple one. The false altar. You already know what this is, right? Not a clue. The place where Lise Clarkson's body was first discovered. She was found under a bridge at some sort of altar oh. as if she was being worshipped. I would never have remembered that. That's what Chef David said, right? Right, under a bridge. Is it there? The sun awakens, refers to dawn, of course. And the tip of the baby bear's tail is the North Star. At dawn, look straight to the north from where Lisa's body was found. Oh, don't know about that, York. Oh, Mark, I don't know about that. Nope. On the surface, this oracle may seem tricky and convoluted, but it's still mere child's play. Huh. Pathetic. Mark doing his racially insensitive accents. Zach, let's follow the Oracle and head to where Lisa's body was found. I don't know what other world refers to, but I'm sure we'll find out once we get there. Oracle? Is she just staring at us as we're having a fucking moment? This case is a rather complicated one. So Zach and I are following Oracles given to us by a skeletal gentleman in order to crack it. As you do. Go to Lisa's discovery site at dawn. Oh, right, we need to wait till dawn. Oh no! Did I hit Patty? I didn't mean, I meant sprint. I didn't mean to punch the child. Officer, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm skin. I'm so poor. I meant to sprint, like run forward. It's the fact that it's R2 to punch and R1 to sprint. And I just instinctively and I punched a Wayne square in the face. Whoops. I'll never hold up in court. Uh this is Lucari Tiger. Do you read me? Over. Lucari Tiger to DC Eagle. Do you copy? It's Daddy. Hurry up and answer. Uh, oh, sorry, use the radio. Didn't realize that was an option there. This is DC Eagle. I read you loud and clear. Over. Oh, good. Mr. York. I'm sure glad you picked up. But we're not using code names anymore. There's no point in using code names if he's just going to say my real name. Oh, he said the exact same thing there. Mr. York, can you hear me? Hey, Mr. York. DC Eagle to Lucare Tiger. Some oh, I got visitors now. Gotta go. Right, bye, Sean. Uh, Mr. York, I got something I need to tell you ASAP. Oh, what is it? Titan, listen, okay? Oh, what's the Potter? Roger Wilco. Go right ahead. Over. I just happened to overhear some of the Clarksons talking on another channel. Apparently, Lisa's mother's been missing since early this morning. Oh. It might be related to the case. So I wanted to let you in on it right away. Oh, over. Lisa's mother. You're referring to Galena, the social butterfly? Over. <laughs> so we can maybe do the bit with Galena and then come back and do the altar quest later on. So, you already did a little research on her, huh? That's right. The one who's gone missing is the younger of the Clarkson sisters. And our town's queen of the night. No one can slip one past me. Because I'm the ultimate FBI agent Francis York Morgan just uh, you dox me completely why don't you <laughs> my proverbial hat goes off to your investigative skills sir anywho Galena used to be an actress and she's also real pretty in the face draws attention wherever she goes if you happen to spot her while you're investigating would you let me know 
I mean, we have seen it once before, but we say that. Oh, yeah. Over. Wait. Hey, Mr. York, what do you say we cut this out, huh? Over this, over that. It all seems kind of overblown. Don't you think? Besides, I reckon we're the only ones listening to this. Hey, you've said that. You've no fucking jinxed it. No need to be so stiff, <laughs> right? Someone's listening. Money on it. Yes, Melvin, I agree. There's no need for us to cling to formalities. Huh, glad to hear it. I ain't never been too good with formalities, you feel me? Hehehehehe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. York, if I hear any more news, I'll be sure to let you know. Good luck out there. Daddy's such a goofball. Patty, do you think Galena is really as beautiful as people say? I mean, she's fine. She's all right. I don't know. I guess. Men just seem to like women like her for some reason. Who's more beautiful? Galena what? or your mother? Mark. Mark. That's not a nice question. What? Candy Woods. Your mother. Melvin said she was the prettiest girl in town. How should I know? That's a stupid question. She's fucking raging. Why is it stupid? My mom is sick. Zach, that was a bad move. Yeah, you fucked that one, Zach. We step right into a or Mark, sorry, without any shoes on. But these things are bound to happen. After all, I'm a special agent of the FBI, and there isn't an organization out there that's more well versed in the art of infringing on people's privacy. Right. What's the quest we got? Oh, no, mate, it's just go to Lisa's discovery site at dawn. Wait, right, actually, where's the Gamma race one at sugar, sugar cane plantation? Let's have a look for a sugar cane plantation. We'll go do this quest while we're waiting on the owl's nest. How big is the car? So we'll probably have to go ah uh, the swamps. Ah, uh, we'll probably have to go out there. What is that? Oh, I guess I've not discovered them, so I don't quite know yet. I mean, that looks kind of sugar cane. -y. We'll do. It. We'll get a sugar cane, hand it back in, then we'll call that a day. Did we need to wait until the morning to do the next quest anyway, or our next part of the mission? God, we're only two. We're two days in. I feel we've barely even scratched the surface of this game. I think it's gonna be a, a long one for because there's so many cutscenes. They're going for so long. Not, that, not. I'm not complaining in a bad way. That there's a lot of pattern, a lot of stuff in the game, you know. But I've got a feeling this is gonna be about maybe seven or eight streams. I want to say. Depends how stuck in I get with some of them. Right, that's, this is where I need to go for the main mission, isn't it? But I need to go at 6 o'clock in the morning, or 8 o'clock in the morning, basically. Right, so I just bounced off the... So I can't run in, into the sugarcane plants, but... Let's take this way, maybe I can get some rice down here. Probably got a cost. I'm so skint, boys. Oh, what's going on here? Hey, Zach, it looks like we were right on the money. Tracing the San Rouge distribution. Route. I'll wait till this, uh, this thing's finished. You know what that means. We've got a hot hand, and Lady Lux given us far more favor than she uh, has before. What? We just happened to hear news about Lisa's murder while sitting in a bar during our vacation in New Orleans. That certainly wouldn't have happened if we had stayed in D.C. They would have given the case to another special agent, or maybe even to the state. And then I we feel like we're not talking about the UFO up there. It would have been shut up in that vast, desolate evidence vault, along with all the other cases, marked by nothing but a first-degree murder tag buried in this a way here, Mark. grave at the bottom of a sea of data. That would have been its fate. Instead, 
It traveled from person to person until it finally fell right into our lap. Things always work out that way for us. We've traveled all over the oh United God, States right. trying to track down Let's Hassan Rouge. We can't just let this chance pass us by, can we, Zach? We need to find some sort of clue. Right, there we go. Let's reload first and what's in the box? Oh, it's a medium quality bead. Right, and then let's see if we can get some rice. I forget stamina. Probably should upgrade myself a little bit. Right. Look at this guy here. Look at him. Anyway, he needs to get some rice. Clarkton Sugarcane Plantation. They do look a bit farmer simulator, you know, like really sort of cheap assets, but uh, collect ingredients. Gather one rice at the sugarcane plantation. Right, if I was rice, there's a wee red mark on my map, I'll go see that. Is this what I'm looking for? That is not what I'm looking for, that's a fucking alligator, I think. Oh Jesus. Oh my god. Did we kill it? Wait, I thought it, I thought this was a fucking alligator skull. I thought this was a fucking tranquilizer gun. Or we fucking tranquilized it then done a predator to it and ripped its skull out. Fucking mork. At least we can try and sell that for a little bit. Right. Can I get rice here, maybe? Oak bark. Right, if I was looking to buy rice... So I don't see... Oh, there's an X on... What's the X mean on my... Map. One chicory leaf. Okay, maybe let's head this way. What I'll do is I'll get off the... I mean, there's just nothing but fields and fields and fields past here. You know, we'll get out of the fields and we'll go. We'll just head back. We'll call it a day, but we'll save somewhere. Did you notice it yet? The streets in New Orleans were a mess. Oh, we've already heard this one. Undergoing maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the ground is. Any race? Any race? Or that? Some heavy rain to cave it all in. There What's that? A lot of places where large. What is that? Is that a dog? Or coyote, or no? Oh, no, he's just... Mark is just going about killing dogs. Holy shit, Mark! I don't know about this. At least we can sell some of the, the dog stuff. Right. Maybe I go I have to go up and actually buy some from the plantation. Because I can't find the race anywhere. Oh, he's humming the uh, which got life is beautiful. God, when it's so far away. Oh, there's wild dogs everywhere. Oh no. God, right, just shoot the wild dogs. Rare kill bonus. Right, I've got one dog tail and one dog fur. Ah, just taking a dark turn. Mork is just kind of finally leading the case, so he's going about murdering animals. Oh, fuck, alligator! Ah! You get money somehow. 
alligator tail. Right, let's... I just slight distraction there when I just seen all the red dots on the thing. Right, so I think that means... Yeah, like, a waypoint. Or maybe it's inside the mill. Did you notice it yet? The streets in New Orleans were off oh, for We've heard this thing. Busted up and undergoing maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the can't go in. Can't interact with you guys at all. Wait, is an X there? Any race just hanging out here? Oh, oh, it is actually hanging out there. Right, and then let's head back and we'll give the race over. And then we can save while we get there when she gives ours the new, what you got, the new to do. Right, and we'll come back much later on. You're a coffee person, right? No sugar, only milk. Yes, I'm completely with you on that one. Nah, black coffee's the only way to go. Wrong button. Oh, how'd I get out? Right, uh... There we go, and check out the map. Where am I going? I'm going to the... Alexis Bar and Lane. Over right waypoint. And this we should be fine just cutting through the houses. Should be fine. If I can find an opening to get into the past the fence. Wait, what's that? I mean, it's a mole hill, but can't interact with it just yet. Over 10 miles travelled bonus. But I will, we'll go give the race over and we'll end it there and then that next time we can just... I have a wee smoke and then wait for the. Oh, what's got what's here? That's Vendy's. Never mind. Get Vendy's anywhere. Oh, excuse me, boysies. Let's just dive in here. Hey Zach, no nothing. Just felt like saying that. And I run, I'll, I'll remember the controls eventually. Right, and don't push the punch button, Mikey. Just run. Just walk in. Give her the rice. For that delicious Cajun dish. Right, where's she at? Let be, honey. Uh, talk. What the heck's supposed to? Oh my lord, you really brought it. I'm going to give you a taste of real, some ca some real Cajun cuisine. Now, while I'm working on that, I hope you'll be a dear and bring me two other ingredients. Green pepper at our house. This ingredient might be a little hard to find, but I believe in you. I know you can find it for me, honey. Zach, do you see how happy Alexis looked just now? She must have a lot of special feelings attached to this dish. I definitely can't wait to taste it now. Yes, I know exactly what film it reminds you of. The Cook, The Thief, His Wife and Her Lover, directed by Paul Greenway, 1989. One of the few European films we actually watched together. After suffering intense domestic violence at hands of her husband, a woman takes her lover, but her husband finds out, and he st that seals the lover's fate. In order to get revenge, she has a chef cook up her dead lover's body. A bizarre murder spliced with cannibalism, it's a story that could happen any day of the week. The director must have wanted to express realistic crime in that film, but that really didn't sit right with us. You and I argued quite a while over whether or not it was possible for the lover to be cooked into a whole roast. Now that's what you call a special dish. What the fuck, Mork? Anyways. Let's do a wee save here. And we'll call that a day. So aye, everyone say goodbye to Mork. He's had quite a quite an experience today. We'll be back with Deadly Premonition on Monday. But I'm afraid, I'm afraid it may be during the day, but I we can catch up with my Twitter and my, uh, my Twitter and my Discord. That's where you get the stream times and shit like that. But in the meantime, boys, let's head over to this screen. Oh yeah, it's a bit of a fucking instant cut.
But aye, we'll be back. Let me work this out. So, we're back tomorrow. I'm not quite sure what time. But we'll be back with Eggs of Steel, Charlie's excellent adventure. Dear God, fucking kill me. But in the meantime, boysies, we're heading over to see Jason. So aye. Let's give Jason a wee raid. Jason eats cake. are currently playing an Elden Ring randomizer, so it's going to be some good patter. But as usual, boysies, I've been Mikey. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Hopefully I'll catch you in the next stream. But until then, boysies, have a good day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Most importantly, boysies, have good mental health. Take care of yourselves. And I'll catch you next time. See yous.